Hi everybody, my name is Barry Schwartz and this is the Search Buzz Video Recap. Today is Friday, December 2nd, and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at seroundtable.com over the past week. First up, we got more machine learning. Machine learning um, is supposedly, as of this week, powering the featured snippets. So, um, a Wired article came out saying that as of this week, Google confirmed with them that the answers, the like the feature snippet results that come up in Google search are now powered by using machine learning techniques, specifically using sentence compression algorithms to figure out which sentences within the actual cert, um, content of a web page should be surfaced for a specific query. And now that's being powered supposedly by machine learning. We asked um, Glenn Gabe, who follows the feature snippets fairly closely, he does studies on them fairly often, and he said he really didn't notice any changes from last week or weeks before to this week. Um, so it's very interesting to see, hey, nothing really changes with this when machine learning went live. Um, or maybe we're not knowing the whole story and Wired's article is not exactly accurate. Or maybe it's live in some cases and not in other cases. So it's hard to know for sure. Also related to algorithms and changes, I believe um, a couple weeks ago, Google changed um, how they surface top stories um, in the algorithm. This came about when Trump won the election and all this fake news stuff came out where people were saying fake news um, should be filtered out and so forth. And, uh, you know, of course, fake news has been around for a long time, but there's lots of attention now towards it. And in a BBC interview with Google's CEO, um, with Google's CEO, sorry about that, um, Google, he said, there should be no situation in which fake news gets distributed. In fact, he also said that they're going to make their albums better better, and make sure to drive news towards more trusted sources. So it seems like Google has updated their top news algorithm or top stories algorithm to only show sites that are more trusted in that, in that area. And I think Google, when the CEO announces that on BBC, I think they act on it fast. And I believe looking at the search results, um, you don't really see Reddit, you don't really see Twitter, you don't see those types of things on there unless there's a really a lot of linkage towards it. Towards it. Um, I think Google did tw tweak that algorithm, um, and it's hard to find um, non-respected or non-newsy stories anymore in the top news algorithm. Of course, there's probably some edge cases and so forth, uh, but that's very interesting to see. And nobody really reported that the algorithm changed. It seems like it did. Google will not confirm it. They said they're working on it, obviously. Uh, the Google CEO said that, but... Google has not confirmed any changes to that top stories algorithm. <clears throat> Big news around the Google Search Console this week. They did a lot of changes. The first thing is they removed the content keywords report. They removed it specifically because people were confused by it. They thought it meant um, these are the keywords they're ranking for. It's not. Search Analytics shows them the keywords they're ranking for in Google Search Console. Um, and also, um, people use it for finding hack content. So if you found you know, your popular keywords on your website were around, I don't know, things that are unrelated to your website, um, then specifically it looks like, um, like you know, you saw things like pornography keywords or, uh, or drug keywords and stuff like that, and your website was not about that, um, that means your site was hacked. But again, there's other ways to figure out if your site was hacked. Google sends hack notifications and so forth. So Google removed it because there was lots of confusion around the content keywords report. Uh, Google Search Console also removed the feature phones errors report because Google actually removed the ability to um, crawl the web as a feature phone. They are no longer, um, Google announced it right after I posted about it, uh, we won't be using the feature phone user agents for crawling for search going forward. And if you still have the feature phone support on your website, you should handle, they should be handled, um, they should then use the handheld link annotation for dynamic serving of the feature phone content. And finally, because of that, they removed, let me zoom in there so you can actually see it, it used to have a feature phone feature over here, and now it is gone from the URL errors report. So that's interesting to see that being gone, um, and feature phone support is now officially removed from Google, crawling, and their analytics and so forth. One of my favorite things they released this week, and this is kind of small, but it's one of those things that really was my one of my pet peeves, was the ability to click on, when Google actually used to have... Um, and their analytics reports or in Search Console, there used to be this update line. And when you click on when you went to the update line, you had to like click on update over here. But every time you tried to click on it, it would go away. It was just like weird things. So now they actually update it, so you can actually click on the update word, and that will actually work and tell you what was updated. Um, these reports are useful in that it tells you if they made any changes. Search Console where the data would be, 
you know, different based on those changes in the back end. Um, it doesn't say Google did an update per se. It means a search update. It was more about a data update um, in the Search Console data specifically. Um, Google Search Console also made a change where they changed the words from submit to index in the fetches Google to request indexing. Let me zoom in so you can see that. The old version, submit to index. The new version, request indexing. Um, and that's just the terminology change to better convey that, you know, just because you submit something to index, it doesn't necessarily mean that Google will go ahead and include it in their index. It just means they're requesting that it should be in the index. Google changed their site move recommendations specifically around big sites versus small or medium sites. For small or medium sites, they recommend you move the whole entire website at once. For larger sites, they say you can, if you want to, move sections of it so that you can actually debug it better. Of course, you can always move the whole thing at once if you want to, uh, but it might be easier for you to de debug. And that's the recommendation they've been using for all these times, but they actually updated the official recommendations um, to say that. Google and Bing both updated their sitemap requirements, saying that they now support a 50 megabyte size file for a sitemap file versus a 10 megabyte file, which is a 400% increase. So that means you can submit really large, long URLs in your sitemap file and so forth. The actual number of URLs still is limited to 50,000 per URLs per sitemap, uh, but the size of those files themselves, if you have really long URLs or weird characters in URLs and so forth, the Google could go up to 50 megabytes. Um, it probably impacts a very few of you, but one of those little changes. Also, Google has updated their mobile-friendly testing tool to allow you to submit any page to the index if you want to. So now there's this new feature that says, let me zoom in so you can see it. It says submit to Google. When you click on that, it lets you pop in, you know, it, it uses the URL from above that you put in here, so bing.com, and will let you submit it to the index, assuming there's no blocking going on there. Um, that's a new feature that was launched this week, so that's a pretty cool feature. Again, submitting it to the index doesn't mean it will be included in the index. It's just another way to get Google to look at your page um, and so forth. Uh, Google's John Mueller said that for page speed, he recommends you keep it to a two to three second or lo less load time. So that's something Google said. They usually don't give numbers, but that's his own number. It's not really the Google number. It's his own number, he said. And Google's knowledge graph now has video carousels within it. So if you look at the knowledge graph, you might get videos. So you can see over here, there are actually videos. Um, also for, you know, other things. So it's local results, it's local panels, it's regular panels. It's, they could show videos, which is nice. Google My Business Support is telling, supposedly telling customers that when they have a Google My Business listing issue, where they're delisted or there's a penalty or something with the Google My Business listing, the local listing, that they should go ahead and submit a reconsideration request. Um, they should go ahead and submit a re reconsideration request um, with Google Search Console as opposed to that. And Google My Business has nothing at all to do with Google Search Console. They're totally unrelated. Submitting a reconsideration request won't work because there's no way to submit a reconsideration request without a manual action. So it's weird that Google My Business support representatives are telling people. Um, this is coming from really good sources. So I'm surprised that this is legit. Um, it seems weird. Maybe there's a miscommunication going on. I'm not exactly sure. Google my business is also letting you set notifications for, sorry, settings for which notifications you want to get. So if you don't like to get notifications about all the reviews or people leaving you or when customers post photos or general health alerts with your site, you can actually disable those alerts in the Google My Business Center under business.google.com slash settings. Um, I personally didn't see the feature live yet, but Google posted that it's coming um, in their help documents. Google My Business also enabled a new beta feature that's being tested for some people. This is really cool. Um, the ability to message, there's a message icon, you can see over here, it says message, and that will actually initiate a chat with the, between the customer clicking message and the business owner. Supposedly by default it goes over SMS, so it will, text, it will send a text message to the business owner, or you can actually use Google Allo um, to actually power it as well. Google's also testing a new local finder with higher and richer graphics. So take a look at this. So this is the new user interface. Look how rich those graphics are. Very, very nice versus the other version which just shows a little image on the right-hand side. Richer graph. I like it. I like the new look very much so. It's not live. It's being tested. Uh, and Google Docs, this is kind of a funny one. Google Docs is actually showing is actually showing if you type in search engine optimization into Google Docs, and then you click on the little Explore tab. 
what it actually recommends or it's telling you is that search engine optimization is related to the animal weasel. So it kind of thinks that um, SEOs are weasels, uh, which is a fun, funny thing. I don't know if I want to disagree with that or not. I'm just joking. And finally, this is the 13th year. and Today is the 13th year that I've been covering the search industry. It's kind of like the bar mitzvah for me writing about search and SEO for 13 years. And I have a big blog post, which I do every year on the anniversary of the Search and Roundtable, covering my thoughts about everything going on, some statistics. So we're up 20%, 25% in traffic year over year. Our mobile traffic is still is only a quarter of our traffic, which is, which is up 10% from the previous year. I'm surprised it's only a quarter of our traffic. Um, search traffic overall is up 30%. Social is up 10%. And direct traffic is over 25%. Um, there's over 23,000 stories on the site over the, over the 13 years. 20,000 plus percent, 20,000 of them or more. I think it's 20,220 something are written by myself directly. And this past year, I wrote over 1,800 stories on this site alone, not including Search Engine Land. Um, lots and lots of comments, so thank you guys. The videos, these videos get a lot of views. So we had over 1.2 billion minutes of watch time across our channel, 5.7 million views in total across the channel. Um, Lots of people are watching it it's on YouTube specifically. Those are YouTube YouTube stuff. iTunes, I don't track. I should be tracking them, but I don't, so I apologize. Um, but in revenue, I think according to YouTube revenue stats, I only made $182 over the course of the year. So I'm not really making money on these things, but it's fine. So I then categorized um, all the most important stories that I think, hopefully I didn't miss anything. So Penguin launching, um, various Google algorithms and so forth. So definitely take a look at them. There are about 15 or 20 stories that I think out over the course of the whole year are the most important ones. Um, I might have missed one. And then the most viewed stories according to Google, to Google Analytics. One of the most top stories that people viewed according to Google Analytics. And then my, my, my predictions or recommendations for 2017. <clears throat> In summary, AMP, mobile first index, machine learning, and stuff like that. So definitely take a look at that and, and you know read it. If you want to comment and leave a nice comment, that's great. Um, always appreciate nice comments. And uh, thanks so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. Again, um, thanks so much for reading for over the past 13 years, for commenting over the past 13 years, for watching the videos and so forth. I really do appreciate it. And here's hopefully for 13 more years of covering search and SEO if there's still if SEO doesn't die by then. Um, that was a joke. In any event, thanks so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. Again, my name is Barry Schwartz. This is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable, SCRoundtable.com. Everyone have a great weekend. And again, today is Friday, December 2nd. Be well. Have a great weekend. I'll see you guys next. Bye.